Hello. Thanks so much for checking out this video, which is an exploration of a class that I teach. It's called the Professional Actors Class, but it was an in-person class until the pandemic. At this point, it has been on Zoom for several terms. These are always eight week terms. And what you're about to see is just a snippet of the work we did this summer. I wanted you to get a sense of what we do in a very short period of time with a group of actors. And so uh, they've selected scenes. Many of the scenes are really long. They're like 14, 15 minute long scenes, which provides the opportunity for a goodly amount of acting work. But what we did was um, put the scenes on Zoom, which means they're on video. So Zoom, as we know, is a little wonky at times. It's not always the most technically proficient, but it really gives you a sense of some of the work that people are doing in class. Now, what I've done is I've condensed the scenes to all below four minutes long. The monologues are even less. But what I want you to get is a sense of how they've worked. These people have come in every week. Maybe they had a Zoom meeting and they actually rehearsed in the middle of the week. They have ideas for backgrounds, most of which didn't work tonight, but some of them did, so we'll keep those. Um, but also it gives you a sense of not everybody's mic is perfect, not everybody has the best camera, but what I wanted to accomplish was having that sense of they are communicating. And that's the thing we found with this class. It feels very intimate. You wouldn't think so because we're not even in the same room, but it actually provides a sense of people really being together. I've got some techniques and tips that I use during the rehearsal process so that they don't even see themselves on camera. They're really working with their scene partner. But also I've done some shamelessly bad uh, editing, but I wanted to provide you uh, some of the times we're doing really filmic techniques. Sometimes we're doing plays and two person scenes, but it all comes together in a, a very fun and um, I think really creative end result. And so what I have for you is just that, a long trailer of the work we've done this summer of 2021. And I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in. Why are you standing here? There's 68 people down there drinking my liquor. There's going to be a wedding. Let's have a wedding. Come on. Didn't you hear what I said? There's another couple waiting to use the green room. Come on, let's go. Roy, could you sit down a minute? I want to talk to you about something. You want to talk now? You had 21 years to talk while she was growing up. I'll talk to you when they're in Bermuda. Can we please have a wedding? We can't have a wedding until you and I have a talk. Are you crazy? Well, you and I are talking here. There are four musicians downstairs playing for $70 an hour. I'll talk to you later when we're dancing. Come on, get Mimsy and let's go. That's what I want to talk to you about. Mimsy? Sit down. You're not going to like this. Is she sick? She's not sick, exactly. You mean she's not sick exactly? Either she's sick or she's not sick. Is she sick? She's not sick. Then let's have a wedding. Mimsy, there's $200 worth of cocktail frankfurters getting cold downstairs. Mimsy? Where's Mimsy? Promise, you're not going to blame me. Blame me for what? What did you do? I didn't do anything, but I don't want to get blamed for it. What's going on here? Are you going to tell me where Mimsy is? Are you going to take an oath that you're not going to blame me? I take it. I take it. Where the hell is she? 
She's locked herself in the bathroom. She's not coming out, and she's not getting married. No kidding. Where is she? Oh, God. He doesn't believe me. I'll kill myself. Mimsy. 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 All right. What did you say to her? I knew it. I knew you'd blame me. You took an oath. God will punish you. I'm not blaming you. I just want to know what stupid thing you said that made her do this. I didn't say a word. I was putting on my lipstick. She was in the bathroom. I heard the door go click. It was locked. My whole life was over. What do you want from me? And you didn't say a word. Nothing. I see. In other words, you're trying to tell me that a normal, healthy, intelligent, 21-year-old college graduate who has driven me crazy the last 18 months with wedding tips, floral arrangements, and choices of assorted hors d'oeuvres has suddenly decided to spend this, the most important day of her life, locked in the Plaza Hotel, John? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You must have said something. Boy, boy, what are you going to do? First, I'm going to get the college graduate out of the bathroom. And we're going to have a wedding. And then you and I are going to have a big talk. Mimsy. Would you like a drink? <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Uh, what's with the flowers? Oh, ugh. that's that dopey prince or king or whatever he is. He keeps sending me a contract, whereas I get $100,000 if we ever get divorced. I'd be like a queen or something, but I only met him in El Morocco once. <laughs> I'm supposed to be his girlfriend, too. I don't know why they bring those things. Well, I guess everybody wants to touch you now. Cheers. Oh, I hate the taste, but I love the effect. <laughs> Would you like to take off your shoes? I mean, I mean, just to rest. Uh, I'm okay. I thought you sounded on the phone like something frightened you. Do you have to go home right away? Are, are you all alone here? Oh, it's okay. <laughs> oh, hey, I cut your picture out of the paper last month when you were defending the Reverend Harley Barnes in Washington. See, I framed it. <laughs> Is something frightening you, Maggie? No, no, it's just you're here. It's odd how I found this. I would have to see my father. He must be very proud of you now. Oh. Now, he left when I was 18 months, see, because he said I wasn't from him, although my mother always said I was, and they keep interviewing me now, and I never know what to answer when they ask where you were born and all, so I thought if he would just see me and, you know, just look at me, I can't explain it. Maybe so you know who you are. Yes. Mm-hmm. But... He wouldn't even talk to me on the phone, just said, see my lawyer and hung up. But on the train back, there was your picture right on the seat looking up at me. And I said, I know who I am. I'm Quentin's friend. But don't worry about it. I mean, you could just be someone's friend, couldn't you? Yes, Maggie. I can be somebody's friend. It's just that you're so beautiful. And I don't mean only your body. Or your face. You wouldn't even have to see me again. I would do anything for you, Quentin. You're like a god. But anybody would have told you to mend your dress. No. They'd have laughed or tried for a quick one. You know. Yes. It's all so clear. The honor. The first honor was... That I didn't try to go to bed with her. She took it for a tribute to her value, and I was only afraid. God, 
the hypocrisy. But why do you speak of love? Oh, hey, you know what I did because of you? I was christening a submarine in the Groton shipyard because I was voted the favorite of all the workers. And I made them bring about 10 workers up on the platform, whereas they're the ones who built it, right? And you know what the Admiral said? I better watch out or I'll be a communist. And suddenly I thought of you and I said, I don't know what's so terrible. They're for the poor people. Isn't that what you believe? I did. But it's a lot more complicated than that, honey. Uh, I wish I knew something. You know how to see it all with your own eyes, Maggie. Nick. I'm doing great, okay. Doing what, what, what needs to be done. I, I, I quit on my own. Five days now, okay. What does that mean? Responsible for myself, but I, I could use some money. Nick, I can't give you any money. I, 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 just, I just need to get some shit together. I, I, I want to go to New York. New York? I, 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 I need to get out of San Francisco. Many bad vibes here. I, I, I just need a few hundred bucks. Look, I want to help. But please, don't ask for money. Look, let's just talk. Have lunch. We can do that, can't we? How are Karen and the kids? They're okay. They ask about you. Next week is their step up ceremony. I'm sure they'd love you to be there. I'd love you to be there. You're guilt tripping me. Look, Dad, just give me some fucking money. And then what? Where does this end? I, I, I don't know. I, things are kind of working out for me right now. I just, I just, I just want this. I got to see this through. You don't have to. Then what? Therapy? We'll find a better place. We'll help you. I'll come back home. We'll make it work. Oh no. No. no, no, no. I'm researching and... you got to be kidding me. Just read it. Jake changes your brain, Nick. Your neural lens are just singed. And you think you've got it under control. But listen, I understand that you're scared. What therapy? That's like your goddamn religion or something. I, I, it doesn't change a goddamn thing. I mean, I can see why I do things, but it doesn't make me any different. I'm attracted to craziness. I, I, that's it. And you're just embarrassed because... I used to be like this special creation, this amazing thing or something. It just don't like who I am. Yeah? And who are you? This is me. This is who I am here. You don't like what you see? Come here. I was dreaming you might come before I died. You might come and scowl at me once more. Oh, Heathcliff, how strong you look. How many years do you live, mean to live after I'm gone? Don't. Don't let me go. If I could only hold you till we both were dead. Will you forget me when I'm in the earth? 
I could so soon forget you as my own life, Kathy. If you die. Poor Heathcliff. Come. Let me feel how strong you are. Strong enough to bring us both back to life, Kathy, if you want to live. No, no, Heathcliff. I want to die. Oh, Kathy. Why did you kill yourself? Hold me. Just hold me. No. I'll not comfort you. My tears don't love you, Kathy. They blight and curse and damn you. Heathcliff, don't break my heart. Oh, Kathy, I never broke your heart. You broke it, Kathy. Kathy, you loved me. What right to throw love away for the poor fancy thing you felt for him? For a handful of wilderness? Misery, death, and all the evils God and man could have handed down would never have parted us. You did that alone. You wandered off like a wanton, greedy child to break your heart and mine. Heathcliff, forgive me. We have so little time. Oh, Kathy, Kathy, your wasted hands. Kiss me again. Heathcliff. He's coming, Mr. Linton. For heaven's sake, go. Only be quick. It's the last time I won't go, Kathy. I'm here. I'll never leave you again. I told you, Alan, when he went away. That night in the rain. I told you I belonged to him. That he was my life, my being. Don't listen to her ravings. It's true. I'm yours, he could. I've never been anyone else's. She doesn't know what she's saying. You can still get out. Go before they get here. Take me to the window. Let me see the moors with you once more. My darling, once more. How beautiful the day is. Can you see the crag? Over there were our castle. I'll wait for you, till you come. Leave her alone. She's mine. She's mine now. Miss Kathy. Oh, my wild heart. Miss Kathy. She's gone. Then your last black deed, Heathcliff, leave this house. She's at peace in heaven and beyond us. What do they know of heaven or hell, Kathy, who know nothing of life? Oh, they're praying for you, Kathy. I'll pray one prayer with them. I'll repeat it till my tongue stiffens. Catherine Earnshaw, may you not rest as long as I live on. I killed you. Haunt me then. Haunt your murderer. I know the ghosts of one of the earth. Be with me always. Take any form. Drive me mad. Only do not leave me in this dark alone where I cannot find you. I cannot live without my life. I cannot die without my soul, Kathy. Oh, my dear. I think we would all agree, if I said that now is the time to stop this nonsense, get down to brass tacks, face the facts, forget about the war, and go fishing. But I'm not going to say it. What I am going to say can be summed up in just one word. Huh? Oh. Um, my wife doesn't think I should sum it up with that one word. I want you all to know that I attribute much of my success as a sergeant to the training I received at the Corn Belt Loan and Trust Company. The knowledge I acquired at the good old bank, I applied to my problems in the infantry. 
For instance, one day in Okinawa, a major comes up to me and says, Stevenson, you see that hill over there? Uh, yes, sir, I see it. Well, you and your platoon are going to attack said hill and take it. But Major, I said, that, that operation involves considerable risk. We don't have sufficient collateral. I'm well aware of that, says the Major. But the fact is, there's the hill, and here are the guys that are going to take it. And then I said, Major, no collateral, no hill. So we didn't take the hill and we lost the war. I think that little story has certain significance. But I'm not sure what it is. Who are you talking to right now? Who is it that you think you see? Do you know how much money I make a year? I mean, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Do you know what would happen if I suddenly decided to stop going into work? A business big enough that it could be listed on the NASDAQ goes belly up, disappears. It ceases to exist without me. No, you clearly don't know who you're talking to, Skylar, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skylar. I am the danger. A guy opens up his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. When the Civil War broke out in 1861, my husband, Sullivan Ballou, immediately joined the first Rhode Island Volunteers. From the Union encampment near Washington, D.C. on July 14th. Now a major, Sullivan wrote this letter to me at home with our sons in Smithfield. My very dear Sarah. The indications are strong that we shall move in a few days, perhaps tomorrow. Lest I should not be able to write again, I feel impelled to write a few lines. It may fall under your eye when I am no more. I have no misgivings about or lack of confidence in the cause in which I am engaged. My courage does not halt or falter. I know how strongly American civilization now leans on the triumph of the government and how great a debt we owe to, to those who went before us to the blood and suffering of the revolution. And I am willing, perfectly willing, to lay down all my joys in this life and help maintain this government and pay that debt. Sarah, my love for you is deathless. It seems to bind me with mighty cables that nothing but omnipotence could break. And yet my love of country comes over me like a strong wind and bears me irresistibly with all those chains to the battlefield. The memories of the blissful moments I have spent with you come swooping over me and I feel most gratified to God and to you that I have enjoyed them for so long. And how hard it is for me to give them up and burn to ashes. The hopes of future years when God willing we might have lived and loved together and seen our sons 
throw up the honorable man who's around us. Captain Miller, Charlie Company, Second Rangers. Corporal Henderson, Easy Company, 501st. Brian, 1st of the 506th. Easy Tundee, 3rd of the 506th. James Francis Ryan? Yes, sir. Uh, how'd you guess that? Uh, looks like you guys got hit pretty hard. Yes, sir. Small unit action. They came in and beat the hell out of us with 88. Tell you what, sir. You're our relief. I'm going to file a complaint. Wouldn't blame you. Who's your CO? Would have been Captain Jennings, sir. I'm afraid the best we can muster up right now is a corporal. So what are you guys all about? We're here for him. Ryan. Me, sir? James Francis Ryan of Iowa? Yes, sir, Pete. No, that's correct. But what's this about? Uh, your brothers were killed in combat. Which ones? All of them. On the level? Yeah, I'm afraid so. You might want to take some time with this. There's some place you want to go and... What's this all about? I lost his brothers. Which one? All of them. So you, you came all the way out here just to tell me that. Well, you're going home. Our orders are to bring you back. Bring me back. Uh, Corporal Henderson, I don't mean to leave you even more shorthanded, but orders are orders. Any communication about when you're going to be relieved up here? Sir, there's no way to tell. I mean, we have no idea what's happening south of us. Sir, I have my orders too, sir, and they don't include me abandoning my post. I understand that, but this changes things. I don't see that it does, sir. Well, the Chief of Staff for the United States Army says it does. Sir, our orders are to hold this bridge at all costs. Our planes in the 82nd have taken out every bridge across the murderet, with the exception of two. One at Valone and this one here. If we let the Germans take them, we're going to lose our foothold and have to displace. Private, your outfit wants to stay, that's one thing. But your party's over. Sir, I can't leave, at least until reinforcements. You got three minutes to gather your gear. Uh, uh, sir, what about them? I mean, why do I need to go? They all... Asshole! Two of our guys are any guy trying to find you, all right? That's right. What were their names? Erwin Wade and Adrian Caparzo. Wade and Caparzo. Didn't make any sense. Make any sense, sir? I mean, why? Why do I deserve to go? Why not any of these guys? I mean, they all fought just as hard as me. Is that what they're supposed to tell your mother when they send her another folded American flag? You tell her that you found me here, and that when you found me, I was with the last brothers I have left, the only brothers I have left, and there's no way I was going to desert them. Which I understand. When the journey ends. I don't love you anymore. We're not the same as we were before. I still do, and most devotedly more. It's painful to give up the one you adore. I still believe 
Can't you see what it is you're doing to me? That's your misfortune. It's too bad. This, our tragedy, is assuredly sad. But you'll recover in due course. You'll find a way to sunnier shores. That may be so, but the hurt's immense. These, your actions, make little sense. Questions abound that need to be asked. Your silence is charade, eloquently masked. There are no answers. Lost what to say. Only, there's nothing new every single day. If change is your desire, then it will be so. I'll move the stars to make our lives glow. We can be fixed if the want is so great, but it'll take two to generate that fate. My heart's not there. The effort's too much. I need to go far to forget, and as such, you'll be a memory that I must forget. A life I had once with moments of regret. It is with tears I wash away your face. I long for that time, allowing time to erase the memory of you, the good and the bad, to move into a world, one I never had. We were a farce, disguised as an ideal, how they were wrong in thoughts and real. All ghosts of you have been exercised. All hopes you once had, I have deprived. All roads to me, for you are now closed. There is but one, and it's the one I proposed. I have lost your aroma. It ceases to be, but there's comfort in that, that we are history. Our blessed union somehow became cursed, a state of play for which you well rehearsed. Your pain is immense, as surely is mine. Once we were one when our souls were aligned. Somewhere we drifted. Our road parted ways. When did that happen? Who's to say? But I'll take from our liaison the best memories, the richness of our lives with cherished stories. How can you say that with cold heart and hand? Our lives, oyster rich, were never just bland. And yet I'm glad that we go our own ways. Dear are the memories I will treasure always.